Welcome to Spit Bucket. Uh, this week we're here again with uh, David Ridge, uh, imported expert. And uh, I can tell you we are both very excited this week. David's excited because Man U finally won a game. Um, I'm excited because we're looking at Nebbiolo, which I find is one of the great grapes on the planet. Yeah, Nebbiolo, that's, uh, I suppose it rivals Pinot Noir for the two. primacy, I guess. They're the two. It's the, only, it's the only other wine, apart from Pinot Noir, that I know that causes grown people to break into little sets to worship it. In that's Club how, Neb. Yeah, so that's how The founder of is. Club Neb in Australia. Yeah, one of those people. Indeed, yeah. <laughs> indeed. And, and also makes very, very large dints in people's bank balances. They can do. Yes. What we're seeing with Neb, uh, Ken, uh, is a strong movement for more of the more of the approachable, affordable ones. You know, like happened to Pinot Noir a few years yeah, ago. Yeah. Great Pinot Noir was all very well, but we couldn't afford it, you know, every Still day. Can't. Um, you know, unless you're him. Oh, um, if only. And the same thing's happening with Nebbiolo. People think of it as a truly great, great variety, mm -hmm. but they want more of it at affordable, uh, at affordable it, price. It very much tracked Pinot in a couple of things. One is colour, because they're the two grapes that the colour is deceptive. I remember talking to a winemaker in Australia who, the first time he made Nebbiolo, he almost tipped it out because he said it came out orange when it first, he first uh, crushed them. And he thought, I've, I've stuffed it. Yeah, stuffed it, but yeah. with yeah. time, they sort themselves out. The other thing is, there was a real push with Pinot in the early days that it could only be grown in Burgundy and nowhere else was going to make any. Now that's been proved very much mistaken. Nebbiolo is still very much, you know, their talk of Piedmont, uh, that's its spiritual home, Piedmont in the north of Italy. Um, but we're, we're starting to see... Just starting to. Yeah, there's, there are, there's six or seven really good Australian ones that are, you know, you'd put in your suitcase and take over there and say, guys, we're making some progress, but we, we're a long way off making the wines of the, the thrill I think we'll see from mm -hmm. these. Anyway, yeah. we're actually looking at uh, the real Nebbiolo's thing, as it were. from the heartland Piemonte in northwest uh, Italy. And anyone who hasn't been to Piemonte, it is just the most Fabulous. It's, I'd rather go there than Tuscany. Yep. I just think it is the most fabulous region. If you think you go to Italy and you don't go to Piedmont, then you're being a fool to yourself and a burden to others. That's how I put it anyway. Interesting. Glass stopper. Now, why you wouldn't go to Screw Cap, I don't know, but I mean, this is this is what they've done. They've gone to the glass stopper um, to avoid cork taint. Yeah. The um, highest level of the, uh, the of the Italian wines from a from a control point of view are either called DOC, yes. denomination denomination or, uh, control of origin, yep. or DOCG, which is a more guaranteed one. The wines are tasted to, to, to guarantee that they're, they're uh, what they say they are. Mm -hmm. Basically, uh, the DOCG, which is two, the the second to, uh, second and third wines we've got today, mm -hmm. th the law in Italy says they must be uh, closed by cork, yep. cork, cork. Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah. So you can't do it. Yeah. Um, this producer, Enzo Brezzer, I think, was the first producer in in Italy and certainly in in Barolo to to use uh, the glass stopper as the alternative. Mm -hmm. They didn't want to go to screw cap. They they really resist screw cap. But when allowed a different closure to the, the blasted cork, mm -hmm. the cursed cork, they, they chose... Uh, um, I'd rather a bit of glass in yeah, there than glass a piece of extra Which they learnt from uh, Prue and Stephen Henschke. Of course. Whose son did vintage there. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay, okay. That's interesting. Yeah. Because uh, the Henschkes do use the odd uh, glass stopper. They do use glass stopper. Now, look, before we do anything else, colour. I don't know how well you can see that uh, on camera, but seriously, if you, if you serve that to an Australian, he'd be looking at it going, Where's the what colour? is it, rosé? Yeah. Um, and yet when you when you look at it, it'll be anything but rosé, I suspect. That colour is, it's got an orangey tint. The character of uh, the character of the wine, um, Nebbiolo is by nature a complex variety. It's, mm. it's uh, and, and what I always mean by complex is that it's got more than one smell. Mm -hmm. And this thing has this opening sort of smell of something like raspberry or dark cherry, or perhaps not there's cherry. Almost, there's a hint of tomato bush as well, there's and florals. And then new there's, things there's, come out as you go. Berries. Every time you go back to them, there's so a that's new a th smell. That to me is complex, not so much different ones, but evolving ones. Yeah. You, you'll go yeah. back to it, there'll be something else. You'll come back to it again, and there's something else. Tasting it, it's when you taste this wine. Um, I could smell that for a long time. That's yeah, a lovely, and, and you do. lovely and aromatic You actually smell. serve these. Uh, they do need a long decant, because mm -hmm. we're coming to, I suppose, the thing that makes them different to Pinot Noir, they're a different variety, but they do have this one character that some see as their drawback and others see as their great glory, and that's this gripping tannin. Mm, it's got that. Uh, American winemakers uh, have been known to call this Pinot Noir with two attitude. <laughs> So basically you've got this gorgeous wine that's so mm. complex and zippy, you know, mm. with this 
fine palate, but you've got to tackle that tannin. There's, again, like when we discuss Chianti, the, the food's important because the, if you, when you've got this sort of tannin, you really do need, it, it looks better with, I mean, I'm happy to drink these by themselves, but this is getting, food. you know, this is fascinating. This is what, you do spend, you do try to buy as much time as you can when, when tasting the viola, don't you? Because yeah. this is now starting to open up to raisin and it's characters, terrific. Uh, dried herbs, roses. Yeah. The classic character of dried rose petals is coming through. And this so, is only a minor wine compared to what we're about to see. And 07's not a bad vintage at all? 07's a cracker mm. of a vintage. They've had, look, They've be, it's, they're blessed, yeah. They're blessed, in, and you look at global warming, the Germans and the Northern Italians just love it because they've gone from getting two or three decent vintages a decade to year after year after year of great wine. Yeah. Ernie Lucen from uh, the Mosul in Germany, he thinks global warming is just Christmas. Yeah. And you can't blame him. All of a sudden they've got great wines coming out the wazoo. Then um, they have 2002 though, which we would describe as a disaster, but the Italians have coined the term a difficult vintage. Difficult vintage, That's yes. But, but you go back, what, some great go back to 95, 95, 96, yeah. 97 was glorious, 98 was a cracker, 99 was sensational, 2000 was rated 100 points by one wine mag, then along came 2001 which was even better, 2002 yes that's your one difficult vintage, uh, 03 perhaps as well because that was the, such a hot year. It was year. hot yeah and a lot of those producers had never dealt with that sort of heat. 04, absolutely stunning, yeah, 05 yeah. which we got a couple of 05s for me is not quite the same standard as 04, but it's still a very good year. 06, we go back up to another cracker. Then we got, I think yeah, 07, 08, 09 are all yeah. going to be stunning. How good's that? Um, unless you buy 02, 03, you're almost guaranteed, um, provided the maker hasn't yep. stuffed it. And yet there were, there were three or four truly great wines made from 02. Oh, truly great again, wines. Again, we, we, the quality of some of the producers. Okay, now look, before we move on to the Barbaresco, um, I've just got to say, Anyone who wants to find out about Nebbiolo, it's, it's not a cheap variety at the moment. You're going to have to pay some money to see something decent. But you're talking 40 odd bucks. I mean, seriously, uh, in the break, I've just put in an order, I can tell you, because I think this is an absolute cracker. For that sort of money, um, I think it's brilliant. I think yeah, it's got the, it's, it's got the fascination, joy to drink, hasn't it? A yeah. joy to drink. Moving on to our next one, Barbaresco. Yeah, just immediately to the north of the main town we're talking about, or it, it, the region is called Piedmont. It's a state, if you like, in, in an Australian sense. Its main town is Torino, Turin. Mm -hmm. Come down 60, 80 k's from Turin, you come to the town of Alba. Just slightly to the north, to the right of the town of, of Alba, is this small super zone for Nebbiolo called Barbaresco. It's, it's where the most elegant of the wines come from, the more fruity, flowery, mm. elegant wines. And this is very a, confusing that they have a grape called Barbera, and yet yeah. Barbaresco is Nebbiolo. Yeah, well, well that's it. The Italian wine's full of confusions, for You're sure. Wrong. For sure. Okay. So the zone is Barbaresco, the variety is Nebbiolo. I mean, the Barbaresco is really put on the map by Angelo Guy. Yeah. Um, yeah. Who, who, it, Italian wine's really put on the map by Angelo There's Guy. There's no he, doubt about that. I suppose the first thing is that same brick red tinge on the end. A L little deeper in colour. So it tells you it's, 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 it's more of a traditional style than a, than a new one where they use a lot of new oak to actually fix colour. Mm -hmm. You know that's how they fix that black blue oh, colour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They actually uh, they'll, they'll put the wine fairly soon into new oak. This will perhaps have seen a little bit of small oak mm -hmm. but almost certainly no new oak so none of those vanilla smells. What you Smoking get is truffles, fragrance. Mushrooms, um, the, the classic uh, the classic description of Barolo Barbaresco is tar and roses. Yeah, yeah. Um, and more on the roses side for Barbaresco and more on the tar, tar side, side for Barolo. Barolo. Mm. They actually do, whether, we, whether you can say these things, they describe Barbaresco as thought of as the feminine wine, yeah. the more aromatic, zippy, nervy wine, and yeah. Barolo is the more ponderous wine, so you'll see darker characters in, in the Barolo we'll see in a sec. Ponderous this is, is got, a very unfair I know, I, know. I, I was only sort of thinking of certain examples. The, um, the fragrance that you get in this... Enjoy Reggie, it's his last uh, visit on this. <laughs> we won't be seeing him again. The fragrance I, I guess you get in Barbaresco is, is red, red flowers, yeah. red fruits. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I see violets in them quite, quite mm -hmm. readily. That sort of... Uh, violets is a really m mythical, mystical, complexing character. Mm -hmm. But they have a real zap on the palate, mm -hmm. which really counterpoints the fact that it's got a lot of tannin. Mm. But we're used to it. A we, lot of tannin. We might not mm -hmm. be noticing it as much as a, as, as a, I'm a newcomer that, to that's it. That's got a whack of yeah. tannin on it. But um, look, not out of place. It's, it's part of the style. 
we come back to the concept of food, um, and there'd be a wide range of dishes you could have with that fella. Um, but you know, meat stew or something like that. I'd yeah, they they that. are they are really um, they're not regarded as all rounders. I have to say they're. Mm. You, you do need strong, robust food, but mm. you know you could go for red fish, you know, uh, uh, red fleshed fish or fish with a red sauce, for example. But you, you're probably getting heavier and yeah, heavier. I, 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 Tuna's got the grip. You yeah, know, tuna I, or mackerel has. the I grip I reckon there'd be better things, better things to drink with them uh, than than that. But in its place, I think that's uh, that's a serious wine. Yeah, it's almost got that sort of um, roast meat gravy character to me. Yeah. Um, some uh, people call that soy or, or yeah, stock. Bit yeah. Of, yeah, bit of stock, absolutely. It's yeah. got that sort of character. You'll see stock very strongly in the next wine. All right, well, speaking of, Shall we? now, this is the king of Italian wines and one of the kings of wine around the world. Yeah, this is Barolo. Uh, Barolo is, is, is another smallish zone made up of 11 communes. We call them parishes or council districts in Australian mm -hmm. terms. Immediately to the south of this, term, of this town called Alba. Uh, the zone of Barolo and it's got five particular communes that are, are most prized and this is probably the, the one Serra Lunga which yeah. is the oh, most the prized packets. yeah mm. and, the, and, and, and if you do these such childish pursuits as mask tastings with grown people and try to outdo each other you would pick a Serra Lunga Barolo by its ferocious tannins mm -hmm. at the end but also by this meat stocky sort of character mm. at the beginning and if they're complex that opens up to that's all intense. sorts of things that's that's serious stuff um, that, that's gorgeous, it's yeah. absolutely, it's wonderfully intense, um, it's got that beef stock soy character, um, almost red cherry, uh, hints of black fruits but not, not mm. quite sort of thing, again, almost cigar box, uh, yep. with black plums, mm. certainly cigar box, mm. And just, you know, if we were here for another hour, which you do with these wines, you do spend a lot of time on them. That's what the whole idea in a big glass, mm. the meditational wines, mm. you would start to see its next division of smells, like fennel seed, mm. uh, licorice type thing. It's got a bit of licorice in there, hasn't it? And it's, it's just, just starting the fennel seed it, thing. It's got uh, plenty of acidity, but a whack of tannins, uh, but it's, that one's ba it's got real balance. That's, I mean, that to me is just a... That's, that's a... I love that wine. Can you I mean, imagine that with Peking duck or something? Oh. Would that knock your socks off? One of the other things, these wines will age. Seriously, um, and a good vin the 04s, the 06s. Um, well sorted 05s. Will, will come, it, look, when I say drink your 05s before your 04s and 06s, I'm probably talking in 15 years anyway. Yeah. Um, the others will go for 20 to 30 without standing on their head if they're well cellared. But that, they are three absolute crackers. Um, and that's Nebbiolo. I reckon. Look, I'd go. I'd go 93 for that. I'd go. I'd go 93 for that. Maybe 95 for that. That's the bargain. That's just such an exciting for that price. That's yeah, they're, they're plus 90 wines. Oh, for sure. It, yep. it, for me, I'm loving. Yep. Absolutely loving yep. that particularly. And that look, which is not in any way to bag that because I still love it. But gee, if you had to pick, um, no, I'm very, very happy with that. Um, happy? Excited? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Nebbiolo. That's almost as good as the Gunners winning the final. Yeah. Oh, please. We didn't have to go there. Yeah, well, we, yeah, we have. Now, okay, from Spitbucket, let us know what you think of, of Nebbiolo, of Barolo, of Piedmont. Uh, like them, not like them? What's the future in Australia? Uh, are they value? Um, I mean, they're expensive wines in anyone's language, but that doesn't mean they're not... Uh, they can be expensive, yet they can be value. I think they're fantastic. We're still missing the palate of the people. Um, They've sent out a search party, um, no idea where he is. Um, and just remember, we spit so you don't have to. Cheers. Cheers.